Um, we have an Ask the Pastor question today. It's actually from last week, and I'm not going to do it today either. <laughs> ah! It'll be next week. I do have an answer for you, but I would rather give the time. Tim Hunter is going to come and share his testimony with us today. And um, so I'm going to turn this time over to him and let him do what he will. <laughs> He's Pentecostal. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, when Glenn asked me to do this, he didn't, he, he didn't tell me that there was going to be a great big full church today. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many are here, it always looks full. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm just going to kind of, I've got kind of a timeline here of, of my life, and uh, hopefully God will fill in the in-between parts for me, help me to fill it in. But, um. Here we go. I was I was born and raised in Southern California, um, so maybe that'll explain to some of you why I am the way I am. <laughs> um, uh, my my folks, uh, who we just got back from a visit to, uh, my dad's 89 now and my mom's 88, and they're still doing well in Southern California, uh, and and they're uh, Presbyterians, and um, we, I was raised in the Presbyterian Church, and um, didn't really like going to church very much at all as a, as a boy. It was very boring to me, and and uh, just I, I I guess I could say I, I hated church. That's what I wrote here. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, we, my folks encouraged encouraged both me and my one brother uh, to go to church, and we fought fought it and. Uh, really didn't like it very much. But uh, one summer I went to a summer church camp and I must have been, I don't know, 10 or, 10 or 12 years old, something like that. <clears throat> and the speaker kind of started making sense to me. So um, they said, if you want to talk more about it, you know, stay, stay behind, <coughs> stay in your seat. And so everybody left and I stayed in my seat and this older gentleman came over to me and, uh, you know, asked me if I wanted to, um, accept Jesus into my heart, and I, I wasn't sure what, you know, what he meant or anything, and, um, and so he, he began to pray, and he began to cry, and, and me, being the way I am, I, I, this totally freaked me out, I'm like, <laughs> what is with this guy, <laughs> what's he crying about, you know, I didn't understand it all, um, so, you know, I continued on my life kind of in a godless manner. Um, you know, in, in school, I, I did pretty well in school, but I was always in trouble. I was a goof off. Um, I remember my mother, you know, you get the report card and little comments. Tim has lots of potential if he'll put himself to, you know, if he'll concentrate in class. Um, so, but I did okay in school and um, made it to high school. I went to Glendale High School in California. Uh, and I, 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 I liked sports. Um, I played basketball in high school and, and ran track, but um, again, I was always in a fight with the coach because <laughs> I goofed off too much. Uh, so I, you know, I mostly rode the bench at, in basketball. <laughs> um, I decided, you know, my folks wanted me to go to college and I, um, we spent a lot of time in the woods camping and stuff as kids. There are woods in California. <laughs> Uh, and I, I developed an interest in the outdoors and I wanted to go to forestry school so we, I went to college in, in Colorado at, at Colorado State University in Fort Collins and I got a forestry degree. Um, I graduated in 1975 and um, after that uh, kind of uh, just messing around in, in uh, Fort Collins again you know I College was a time for partying for me. It was not a time for God. Um, so um, I, I did a little bit of firefighting, and then um, the first real job I got was at the uh, wastewater treatment plant in Estes Park, Colorado. And that uh, started about a 30 year uh, career for me in the operation and management of water and wastewater facilities. That's 
what I did as my job for most of my working career. Um, after Estes Park, I got a job working for the state of Montana in, in Helena, and that's where I met Shelley. <laughs> and uh, thank goodness for that. Um, God was must have had His hand in that um, because you know we've been married for we got married in 1980. Uh, been married for 35 years, and um, you know she's been uh, my best friend and for all those years. Uh, we had we had a child in 1980, and uh, his name is Casey. And I'm going to spend some time talking about Casey because uh, God used Casey to bring us to him. Um, Casey was our wonderful, active, strong-willed, <laughs> smart, funny boy. Um, we just adored him. He. Um, he was an amazing skier, and I, I was thinking this morning, uh, there was a time when we were skiing together, and um, it was a, one of these black diamond mogul runs, you know, and I was standing on the top with Casey, and he took off and, you know, skied down to the bottom. He was maybe 10 years old or something. And these other people, you know, all these people are standing at the top of the ski run and saying, huh, I don't know, this looks pretty tough, and, and then, then Casey goes, and um, they go, did you see that little kid <laughs> ski that run? And, and uh, I said, yeah, that was my son. <laughs> and then I went down very slowly. <laughs> um, anyway, Casey, uh, he was really smart. He was, uh, you know, I guess uh, took after his father in school. He, he got in trouble a lot. And um, he was diagnosed with ADHD, um, you know, very active and uh, just in trouble all the time, bored out of his mind in school. But, you know, we went to counseling and gave him all these different medicines and things. And uh, things just got worse for Casey. Um, he started using drugs at an early age uh, and alcohol and, you know, was some trouble with the law and um, <clears throat> lots of angry outbursts at home. And, um, it was it was tough, a real challenge for Shelley and I. And without God in our lives, really, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of guidance uh, on how to handle these things. So um, anyway, in the meantime, Shelley and I. Um, we moved from Helena to Hamilton. I worked at the Hamilton Wastewater Treatment Plant for a time. And then I was the wastewater superintendent for the city of Missoula for almost 12 years. Then I worked for a, a consulting engineering firm, HDR, and then I worked for a couple other companies, and I began to travel a lot for my work. Um, Casey continued to kind of have problems and um, we just were at our wit's end. So we um, learned of a program, you know, for troubled teens, and uh, we put him in the program. And he was out of the country in the in this program. It was in Mexico. And, uh, you know, kind of a point system. They had to earn their way back into society. Um, it was a really hard decision for us to make to, to put him in the program, but we did. And um, at that time also, um, I, I, I had recently gone to work for HDR and a, a, a man, a good friend, still a good friend named Craig Caprera, uh, shared a small office space with me. And Craig was a Christian man. He went to a church called the Missoula Christian Church in Missoula and he kept inviting me to go to church. I didn't think much of that, but um, he kept inviting me, and he was pretty persistent. Um, he also, um, also at that time, the office was um, really small, and our desks backed up kind of, we faced each other, our desks faced each other, and so he was, you know, I got to see a lot of Craig and how he interacted with his family, you know, his kids would call him on the phone and stuff, and, you know, and, 
his loving wife, and, and uh, it was just he, he was a great example of a, of a godly Christian man who kind of had things together. Um, part of the program that we put our son in, they um, had these seminars for the parents, so that when your kids got out of the program, you'd kind of know how to deal with them. Uh, it was really helpful, and these, these uh, seminars were really intense. They would um, like deprive you of sleep and make you do all this homework, and you know we got very emotional and uh, you know, talked about our past. So, uh, <clears throat> one of the um, things that we brought back from you know they gave us things to do when we got away from the seminar, and they talked about you know having a, sp a spiritual component in your life, and it was really lacking in ours at that time. So. We made the commitment there to go to some different churches and see what, what it was like. And, and um, one of the churches we went to was Craig's church. So they were very glad to see me there. Um, and we became very active in that church. Uh, we, you know, truly accepted Jesus into our hearts and we were baptized in Flathead Lake. Um, we became very... Um, Involved, we were we became leaders in Bible studies, and um, so that was kind of the beginning of our spiritual walk. Um, but it was all because of Casey, really. Um, God used him. So Casey, um, you know, he made it through the program finally, almost two years. It took him. Uh, he, you know, they were able to go to school, and so he was. He graduated high school in the program, and uh, you know, he came home and uh, to Missoula. He's living in Missoula. He worked in body shops, and um, you know, worked had his own house there and stuff. Uh, and then uh, in about 2004, I got tired of traveling, and I moved to Stephensville and opened a bed and breakfast with Shelley. And we did that for 10 years. Um, on July 7th, uh, 2006, we got a call that no parent wants to, wants to get, but Casey had drowned in Flathead Lake. He was 23. Uh, so at that time, we were still attending Missoula Christian Church in Missoula. You know, driving from Stephenville, we had the the memorial service was held there, and um, you know my family all came, of course. And but really, um, you know, Casey's death brought us closer to God, and um, brought my my family closer together. Um, my brother, I just have the one brother. Um, would come. They live in Helena, and they would come to. Uh, Stevens feel like monthly to, to visit us. And we'd, never, we'd never done that before. Um, so, uh, the Missoula Christian Church kind of <clears throat> fell apart. Um, the, you know, they had a kind of a split in the church. The, um, our beloved pastor who, you know, we just, we just adored the, him and he was such a great, great dynamic speaker. Um, they, they let him go, and with that, about half the congregation left that church. But we stuck out for a while and kept driving up to Missoula. And, um, but that really was a diff another difficult time for us because, I mean, this was our first real church family, and half of them just left, you know, and it was, it was hard. And Gene, our dear friend Gene, was at the church with us then. As well, that's what we meant. Um, anyway, about 2008, we walked in that door over there and met, met all you folks. And, uh, we're just so thankful to have found a church that's um, welcomed us without judgment, without all the drama that we had experienced at our other church. Uh, we've really become accustomed to being questioned every time we walk through the door. So um, we, we just love worshiping here. I 
love being a part of the music here, and uh, that really means a lot to me. And I just thank to all of you for your love and prayers, and thank you, Glenn, for just understanding me, and <laughs> Steve and Angie for the music. You guys are awesome. Um, so I got in closing. I I thought by this time uh, I'm almost 62. I thought I'd, I'd have a lot more things figured out than I do. Um, but it seems like it seems like the older I get, the the less sure I am about a lot of things. Um, so please, you know, pray for me and and Shelley and um, I mean I struggle with my faith every day. Um, <clears throat> But with you guys, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Um, so, and, and, and we still grieve the loss of our son. And we hope to see him again in heaven. So I'm going to read um, two Bible verses to you. These, this is actually um, a little folder from the memorial service for Casey. That's his picture on the front. <coughs> But these are the verses that uh, we chose at the memorial service. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. And the second one is James 4, 14. You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. <coughs> what is your life? You are but a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Thank you. Tim and Shelley, gosh, it's been a while back about sharing your testimony and, and knowing how raw the emotions were. Um, and I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for somebody that can get up and share their heart on, on the loss of a child. And incredibly how God can use that to draw people. Uh, they are one of two families that I know that it took the loss of a child to really get their minds set right on God. And so to, to share that, thank you very much, Tim. It's a very much a blessing. 